time for a read aloud guest, so sit down, take a load off of your feet, and gear up for a good book. Welcome Dr. Shannon Peoples and listen as she shares a great story with us. I'm Shannon Peoples. I'm the very proud principal of Cone Elementary School. This day, I am going to be reading to you Circle Unbroken by Margo Face Raven. Pictures by E.B. Lewis. Circle Unbroken, the story of a basket and its people. Now you've asked me, child, how I come to sew. Well, put yourself in grandma's arms and listen to a circle tale from long, long ago. One year old tiny grandfather lived in a village by a fine flowing river across a wide deep ocean in far away Africa. On the hills by the river grew pale stalks of rice to feed the village and the spirits of the land. By the banks of the river grew tall grassy reeds to weave into baskets to winnow the rice. Have you ever been somewhere where they had reeds like that near the water? I've been where they've had rice fields and paddies when I lived in Asia, but I have not been somewhere like that. One day after harvest, when he was no longer a boy, but not yet a man, your old tiny grandfather was led by the men who lived in the village to a grove in the forest where the palm trees grew. It was their sacred place, the Poro Bush, not far from the rice and the fine flowing river, where the men beat their drums and the boy became a man. Can you bring water in a basket? Asked Spirit. A masked spirit asked him there. When he answered yes, the men of the village took him into the grove, gave him a name, and taught him all they knew, just as I am teaching you now. Do you have someone in your family or in your circle of friends that teaches you about things that have been passed down in your family or your tradition? I do. They taught him to make ropes and nets and traps to hunt in the woods and harrow and hoe, to make drums from logs to pound as he danced and to sew great baskets to hold the rice. The basket starts here, they said, and taught him fingers to talk to make a knot first, a coil, a circle unbroken. Then his basket grew and grew, circle on circle, coil on coil, and when his fingers talked just right and the wet season came, his basket held the rain and the men were pleased just as I am pleased with you. I heard the title in there, did you? The Circle Unbroken? How it coiled and coiled around. But the wide deep ocean held the rain too, and the, tr and the rain fell bitter as your grandfather's tears. When the slave men came and bound him in chains and stole him from his village to a ship bound for a strange new land. I cannot even imagine the horror of that. I hope that we never have to imagine that again in our history. In the port of Charleston, he was put on a stand and heard the auction man cry, going fast, going slow, going high, going low. He was sold to a master who owned a great plantation by a long curving river that flowed to the ocean that touched the shores of his faraway Africa. Have you ever been to Charleston? It's in South Carolina. I lived there when I was younger, much younger. That's where my brother was actually born. It's hard to imagine that it wasn't that long ago and not that far away that something like this was happening. He lived in a shanty shingled with cypress. He worked in the rice fields from day clean to sun go red. But long night after long day, he sewed baskets in the old way from the bulrush that whoosh and hushed by the marshes and the rivers that flowed to the sea. The grasses brought him comfort. His fingers knew their secret. Never forget, he whispered. As he sewed palmetto strips in and out, around and through, his circle grew and grew, and his fingers talked just right. His basket held the rain, and he remembered from where he came. Now, on a nearby plantation lived your old-timey grandmother who came too from a village across the wide, deep ocean. Long ago, when she was not yet a woman but no longer a girl, the women of the village took her into the sand bush, their sacred place, and taught her all they knew. She learned to grow a garden of 
cassava and sweet potatoes, to fish with nets where, when the river was low, to winnow rice in a fanner basket, tossing the grains up fast and slow. And she learned to sew small baskets to hold the treasures of her hut, ginger, palm fruit, and koala nut. And then her fingers talked just right, each coil touched so tight, her basket held the rain. One day in the shadow of the big house, your old timey grandmother wed your old timey grandfather. They had children and the baby slept in the sun in Moses baskets while the field work was done. And when the babies cried, your old timey grandmother sang to them, soft as gray moss, low as the going out tide. Then those children had children and those children too, till one day the Yankees came with cannons, sounding, pounding, booming over the land. What's coming, Grandma? The yard children cried. Freedom, she said. There was the promise of that long ago. We're not there yet, though. And the lap children watched as a sea of blue coats went marching, marching by, while the basket children lay, looking up, not knowing that everything was changing like clouds blowing in the sky. Now it was the times after slavery when your great, great, great grandfather worked shares of this land of marsh, sea, and sky, where the creek beds rose high and the old rice fields, melting them away like shadows into shade. He built a boat of wood and took it to the sea, far past the shores where the sweet grass grows. Rowing in, he had the fish for his family and fish to sell. Then long night after long day, he told children's tale, ch told children, tales of Br'er Rabbit and Br'er Fox, till their laughing eyes danced like sunlight on the water, stars above the creek. A lot of those stories that have been passed down share very important parts of our histories. It is important that we know them and we share them. Your great, great, great grandmama heard the stories too. Next day she carried fish and wares to market in the basket she made, toting her burdens and cares high on her head. And the circle went out and out like the stone that milled their corn and the net that caught their shrimp and the rising shout that praised their Lord, just as I give praise for you. Then their children had children and their children too until one day across the great wide ocean, a war began. The men of the island went away like the tide while the women waited and sewed long night after long day. There's a lot of strength in the history. When the men came home again, the bridge builders came too, tying islands to land with still steel arching hands. What's coming, Grandma? The yard children cried. Tomorrow, she sighed. And the porch children watched as the bridges brought cars and the cars brought people and the basket children lay looking up at the sky, not knowing the old ways were leaving as fast as the cars passing by. But some folks at night sat around the lamplight showing the young ones the road, the road ahead was over and through as new hands talked to old friends, the bulrush, the sweetgrass, palmetto, and pine. Those children had children who put up wooden stands to show their baskets along the highways and in the marketplace where the tourists came through and thought the beauty of the old baskets was something new, just as my baskets are new to you. While the women sat behind their stands, their sacred place, sewing and sharing with daughters all they knew, the men took the boys to their sacred place, the dunes and marshes by the creeks and the sea, to cut the bulrush and pull the sweet grass and dry it in the sun as it had been done long ago. And so it has always been, time flowing like a river, circle going out like a pebble in a pond, until I came along, your mama and you. And the time has come now, child, for you to learn the knot that ties us all together, the circle unbroken. And when your fingers talk just right, that circle will go out and out again, past slavery and freedom, old ways and new, and your basket will hold the past, just as surely and tightly as my arms now hold and circle you. The end.